July 20th marked the 50 year anniversary of the historic Apollo 11 moon landing. The anniversary reinvigorated Americans' interest in outer space. But for a new hope man, that love affair with the galaxy is ongoing. And it brings him to some unexpected places around the Twin Cities. When most people make their way to the Animal Humane Society in Golden Valley, it's with the intent that they'll find a new pet to bring home. Well, I think we'll go up there. But Scott Peterson isn't like most people. Yep. He's here for a reason some might consider as weird. It's not weird. Correction, for a reason that's unique. You see, Scott is here to get onto the building's rooftop and sift through piles of dirt with a powerful magnet. So this is just my uh, my magnet that I use. It's sometimes they use it for uh, like like a fishing magnet, but then you see that stuff collects on the end of it. The stuff he's collecting with that magnet isn't just regular dirt. Specifically, he's looking for micrometeorites. They're so small, like you can't. In other words, you can never like actually look at them and find them. Magnetic specks of dust from outer space. They're usually around 0.2 to 0.4 millimeters, so they're really, really small. Like if you take a dot at the end of a pencil and put that on a piece of paper, like that's roughly the size that they are. This exercise has become somewhat of an obsession for the stay-at-home dad who served in Iraq and Afghanistan. They're so beautiful. So far, he's found nearly a thousand of the microscopic space pebbles, making him one of the world's preeminent micrometeorite collectors. I mean, these little pieces that I find are billions of years old. Sometimes they're older than the Earth themselves. Yet something so tiny has paid off in a big way. Scott now has a full-blown exhibit dedicated to his work at the University of Minnesota's Bell Museum. The exhibit is called City Stardust, micrometeorites in our own backyard. Visitors can learn about the collection and examination process. They can see micrometeorites with their own eyes, and they can check out large-scale images from Scott's collection. It's really, it's a passion point for the Bell Museum to be able to put this really amazing work on display because we want more people to be engaged and to understand that science is for everyone and if we all take a little time and look a little bit closer, we can make some really interesting discoveries together. It remains to be seen what we can learn from micrometeorites. There's a lot of interesting science. We don't know too much about them so far. There hasn't been a lot of research. The unanswered questions are one of the reasons why Scott goes through the painstaking task of scouring local rooftops. I can fill this bag up. Assuming the businesses grant him access. If I have articles to show them, they can see that I'm not just some guy that wants to go on the roof and, I don't know, do whatever, so. The work done by this guy on the roof could one day help answer some important questions about our universe and in the process, help to inspire other people to discover their inner scientist. I don't know where it'll take me, but hopefully somewhere interesting. Scott says he hopes to one day write a book about micro micrometeorites. Meanwhile, his exhibit at the Bell Museum runs through September 8th. It's part of a year-long celebration of space science to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the moon landing.